I think we're live. <laughs> Yay. Um, we are live tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about co-parenting with an abuser, um, a spouse or what, you know, an abuser. So I, um, man, I get so nervous every time. Um, so I want to share a little something about the journey I am in right now. Um, and then we can kind of, it kind of relates to what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, if you want to comment, I think I can see your comments, hopefully. Um, yeah. So, uh, or if, comments and your feedback. Yes. Yeah. And if you have any questions or we'll try to answer. Um, recently, I've been, as some of you know, I've been through another storm. Uh, my dad got COVID and pneumonia that's kind of, I guess, associated with that. And um, I really felt like it was another storm. Sunday, I heard the news Sunday morning and all of Sunday I was a mess. I didn't sleep Sunday. I was trying to be strong for my mom and I barely cried. I mean, there was some tears and she would freak out every time she saw me cry. So I was like, everything's fine. Let's, you know, trust God. And then she uh, took some medication and I had her sleep next to me. And, um, and then I bought, as soon as I could, tell she was asleep I just like let it all out and I spend that night um just crying out to God and um really I guess mm, releasing my dad like um not submitting what is it uh just kind of just letting it go like whatever happens Lord it's going to be okay because looking back through different storms of life whether he's given me what I've asked wanted and whether he's taken it away it's been fine it's been he has used it for my good and learning to um, surrender. That's the word, surrender my dad to that. And then um, Monday morning, I had barely slept. I went to a prayer meeting at church and it was good to be with believers and the body of Christ and have them pray for me. And, um, and then after that, I just had this supernatural peace and joy even, you know, um, that the Bible promises us in the midst of the storms. And I there's a lot of times I wanted to cancel a lot of things I, that was happening on Monday and today. And, but I felt like, you know what, God wants to put himself on display through us. Mm -hmm. And it's okay for people to, to see me crying, but it's all, it's also good for the, for people to see that you can have peace and joy in the midst of your storm because it's supernatural. It doesn't come from your circumstance. It comes from Jesus. And, yeah. um, just that relationship. So it's related because uh, when I was fighting so hard to get uh, my ex out of prison, I gave three and a half years of my life and I felt exhausted. And uh, some of you know the journey. He had a phone the last year of his imprisonment and uh, he was, I realized he's still abusive. He was threatening me. And of course he had, he had developed extreme um, PTSD and paranoia and thought I was stealing his fame. And I was really scared for my life. So um, I drew boundaries. Uh, I think in November of 2015, I told him I can't answer his calls from prison anymore. And until he could be nice to me, that's all I asked. I was like, if you can be nice to me, then I'll talk to you. And he never <laughs> called me again. <laughs> So, um, and that was God's protection over me because I'm, I have such a soft heart yeah. Someone, and you, you're like that too. People could do whatever and they can just say sorry without anything else. And I'll be like, it's okay. It's going to be yeah. fine. Um, and I think God made his hard heart until I could really set up boundaries and he never was, he didn't call back to say, okay, I'm sorry. Um, and then God just grew me through that because I met my counselor and he taught me about boundaries. Uh, but I remember being extremely exhausted when I heard Saeed was out of prison. So yeah. here I'd given everything to mm -hmm. get him out of prison and I was completely exhausted and had no energy, but I had to fight for the protection of me and the kids. And I just remember getting on my fa uh, just face before God. And of course, everything I did um, was on the media everything, every little, I stepped out of my house. I was, someone was sharing something. I went, did a protection order. It was all over media. Um, recently we spoke to a, a amazing woman of God and she said she'd read my story on USA Today. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay, Lord, when everything was being covered and I was being so annoyed by it and I was so broken, you were using that for other people's lives. So all of this being said, I was exhausted. And I just remember being on my face before God and saying, I can't do this. I have no energy to fight for custody. 
for the stuff dealing with Saeed and then everyone's opinion and uh, wow. everyone wanting us the happy ending of us getting back together, which is what I wanted also. But, um, but a lot of women coming out of abuse feel that way. They're already exhausted from the abuse, uh, physically, emotionally, all of that. And then they have to now, bat there's another battle of, mm -hmm. you know, the divorce, separation, custody. Uh, now, in my mind, I, when I surrendered my marriage to God, um, you know, I wanted it back. And I, I thought, you know, if I have to wait till I'm 80, I'll wait for him to repent. And um, that, that was my mindset. I can just wait until he changes. And, you know, when he divorced me, um, my counselor and my pastor were like, you're free, you know. But all of this being said, I know I'm going on a tangent, is I was exhausted and I had to fight another battle mm -hmm. with now dealing with an abusive, co-parenting with an abuser, fighting for my kids' custody and all that. And I have to say, I sometimes I feel guilty because God fought my battle in such a way. Um, my lawyer, everyone said, you're going to have to deal with him. He's, there's going to be... Um, joint custody. You just have to, that's the norm. And, um, I'm not going to go into detail, but God really, I just, I was so exhausted. And I was just, I, my main strategy, even in dealing with him, we're going to come up with other strategies, but it was just crying out to God and saying, I can't do it. I'm tired. I gave my life trying to get him out. Now he's out and coming after me. He, he wanted, to, he was mad at me. He thought I was stealing his fame and he was paranoid. And, and of course he'd been abusive before. So I just cried out to God a lot probably spent a few years off of social media and just cried out and just uh, saw him um, do things in my life. And there's things that my counselor said that helped that we want to discuss tonight. But um, I got full physical, full, uh, what is it called? Legal, legal custody. He's out of our life. He has a warrant out for his arrest. It's just the way God just got him out and away from our family that uh, and the police and the detectives were amazing here with me they believed me they defended me they were patrolling they were telling me I mean it was just amazing so I'm really thankful for that I know not everyone has that and I sometimes feel bad about it because I'm like I just I feel so blessed that um, for a season I had to co-parent but yeah. um, I don't have to really he's really out of our life so um, one of the things I want to share is um, Oh, and I want to say my worst fear, the reason, um, because Saeed was abusive before our marriage, my worst fear was that my kids were going to be without a father. And my daughter said something recently, we were watching a show, uh, it was a you know, single mom dating, and she said, mom, will you ever date? And I said, I don't know, I've kind of been open to it in the last few months. Um, but she said, I've never seen you with anyone, like even daddy. And I realized that's true. Like, it's just, um, it's been, you know, basically our marriage was bad from the beginning and I was a single mom from the beginning and um and then him being out of our life it's something I didn't ever want but it's something that God actually like he removed him basically from the beginning of my marriage my contact with him was minimal mm -hmm. um and he removed him from the lives of my kids early on uh, he was gone a lot when they were born and then he was in prison and then he was gone and so I saw that as a bad thing because I always wanted my kids to have a father, but mm -hmm. now I see that it was a, it's, it's been a protection over us. So one thing I want to say that my counselor said, and I want you to expand on that, is um, one way to co-parent with an abuser is communication. You want to expand on that? The way you communicate is so important. I was This was num one of the number one things that my counselor told me. So Melody, you want to expand on that? Yeah, I, I like to think of this in, in visual terms as um, an abuser's tactics being circular and kind of like an electric current that fires. And what you have to do is really interrupt the cycle. Mm -hmm. And um, you have to kind of change your style of communication to not react, but definitely respond when you have to. So it's short, short responses. You don't want to expand. You just want to be yeah. short and I to the point. Like boring actually yes I, I love that extremely boring extremely uh unattractive in your communication unengaging state the facts and then you know black and white unattractive but, i love that yeah because they really want reaction out of you right and you don't give it to them and yeah. I, I think sticking to texts and email don't try to get on a phone or 
try, don't try to have verbal as much as you can. Try it, have it be mostly written so you can also have evidence. You really need it. I can't tell you how many times, countless times, I've had to send screenshots of app communication, forward emails, and it's always been to my advantage. Um, if for some reason the children have to be on a call, let's say the, call, the calls are involved in some way and it, it, you can't get around it, you can record them and then ask your attorney what's legal as far as sharing that. Because some states you can't record. Idaho, I could. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you can do it in California. I, I do. You, you can? <laughs> yes, I do. At the advice of my attorney, I record calls. Okay. I don't know all the state rules, but um, I could do it in, in Idaho, and it did work on my for my benefit. So um, one thing I want to share from scripture is, I'm looking at my notes. Um, my notes are on my phone. <laughs> Good job. So that you know why, you guys know why I keep looking down. Um, one well, thing that my counselor did say was don't throw your pearls to the pig. Uh, and that has been so helpful, not only with communicating mm. with an abuser, but in anything, it's if someone, um, let me read the Bible verse. It says, do not give what is holy to dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine or they will trample them under their feet mm -hmm. and turn and tear you to pieces. So you're giving something that's precious to this, the pig and the pig, once you bring you down to their level and roll exactly. in the mud with you. And then they trample on that and then they come back and attack you. So don't share, uh, don't communicate and share important stuff with someone who's not appreciative. I do that with friendships. If I feel like someone's really not um, appreciative of what I share, then I take back, I don't throw my pearl. And, um, and if they don't treasure it, uh, and if they're going to, and I don't get caught up in arguments, if I'm like, you know, because when you get rolled in the mud, uh, then you feel really dirty, right? <laughs> the other thing that can happen is even if it's not communication with the abuser that's a problem, he can have family members, he can have friends, he can have mm -hmm. tactics where he tries to actually get messages to a victim. And mm -hmm. that can be really, really damaging and really threatening to the health of a victim who's in um, a state of healing. And so I would be really cautious about um, sharing any information. And I really found myself feeling this way, like, Anything I do and say is used against me. So I became mm -hmm. extremely wise. And, and that's really the... Direction. And, and Proverbs says wisdom is being very careful with your words. Yes. So sometimes when we come out of abuse, we're in this, um, I don't know, this state where we want to, uh, we're very sensitive. We're like a wounded dog. Someone touches us and we're like blowing up. And mm -hmm. so it's really important to keep your communication very minimal. Don't react. Don't give them too much, just minimal communication and response. And they don't like that. So one way, if that doesn't work, if they see they're not riling you up, they're not getting you all riled up mm -hmm. um, through that, just through their communication. And you're just kind of like very unattractive, as you said, and unresponsive, then they use kids. True. Yeah. And one of the things we want to talk about, then they start communicating um, via kids uh, and sometimes acting like the victim with the kids, like, that they uh, like your mom you know is taking money from me or whatever i'm poor i have to do this or so how do you deal with that melody when they're they start saying things to the kids to kind of brainwash them against you yeah so i'll just say that this actually happened to me and it was my biggest fear um when separating i thought you know the i've lost everything and now i'm in jeopardy of losing my children and i had a lot of fear that this would um be a situation where he would begin to communicate in a, in a way that was slanderous towards our children. Mm -hmm. And for a short time, my daughter was angry, but she didn't. Um, mm -hmm. it's my son too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was more of like an internal anger that she refused to really elaborate mm -hmm. on. But what I did was I just kept affirming the children and speaking their love language specifically and mm -hmm. making sure she knew the truth. And I didn't, ex <clears throat> I didn't tell her, that she had a father who was, you know, a horrible person and I didn't speak badly of him. That's, I, that is so important. You do yeah. not speak. I want to expand on that later, but yeah, go ahead. And, and I think um, just living a, a lifestyle that's a testimony of what God's expectations are for us and treating others well, regardless of what mm -hmm. happened. 
And I did want there to be accountability. It wasn't like I wanted my children to have a, a fairy tale perspective. And plus, it would be confusing to say, oh, yeah, your dad is perfect, but I'm just not with him. <laughs> the message was um, definitely yeah. seasoned for their comprehension. Yeah. And then um, very carefully affirming truths and reading scripture was something I know that you did a lot. I took the children mm-hmm. to the church and prayed with them a lot. And just made sure that they knew how loved they were. And I would, you know, it was not always easy. But the things that I communicated were true. And over time and consistency, my daughter responded beautifully. She's not an angry person anymore. My yeah. son, he Me too. My son grew out of that. Yeah. So with mm-hmm. time, I mean, that's the message of hope too. There yeah, be- I do want to say this is really important. Um, mm-hmm. I spent, it takes a lot because you're already tired and exhausted. And now you have to fight this battle where yep. there's court battles and documents. And I remember um, my counselor saying, which is another point, keep record. And I remember thinking, what is he thinking? Like writing everything down. Um, <laughs> uh, what is it? Timeline of abuse, take yeah. screenshots, have a journal. I'm like, I am so tired. I didn't take it seriously the first six months. Okay. And then I did. And then he said, take your record of everything and report anything criminal to report it. Because I've always, I always felt guilty. Even when he was threatening me, I was like, he just got out of prison. I don't want to like get him in prison again. And I felt bad. I didn't want to report everything, all the threats and all the stuff. But then I started doing it and it really protected me and the kids where now we are protected. He has a warrant out for his arrest. And um, of course, during that time is when I developed a lot of, his uh, threats against me mm-hmm. after prison a couple of years ago is when I developed the autoimmune. But, wow. um, but when I reported and when, when I re- recorded everything, mm-hmm. it really, and the Bible says God uses the government <laughs> for our benefit. So, um, but, so I did that. I remember my counselor saying that and I didn't take it seriously the first six months, but then I did record it and report it. Those are important. But also one thing I, I didn't feel like I had the energy for, but I did for two years straight yeah. and I still do it. Um, but I was, I did it when I was really tired, was spending time with the kids in the morning and at night in devotional. Okay. Um, yeah. We read, we also read Pilgrim's Progress, an amazing book, amazing book. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I try to read it every once in a while. So, but we, we, I spent a lot of time in prayer and scripture with them because instead of talking bad about their dad or um, trying to, uh, if he, he said a lot of things against me instead of trying to defend myself, yeah. I said, you know what, let's go to the word of God. And I prayed that over time they would see truth and they did. They saw I was, and they saw that I didn't hate him. And, you know, and one thing I want to say, no one, one thing that has helped me not to hate anyone is no one is so important to disobey God. If God says, don't hate, forgive, have no bitterness. Like he's number one in my life. God is number one. And no one is so important that I would uh, disobey God and have hate and anger and and, unforgiveness Mm -hmm. and bitterness. And a lot of people mistook my boundaries in terms of uh, filing for a legal separation protection order as hate. And that was actually love. That was, I did that at the height of my love for my husband because I realized I was enabling bad behavior. Mm -hmm. So that was not, and my kids saw that they saw, I didn't hate him. I didn't talk bad about him. And it actually backfired. It backfired on him when he was talking negative and bad and I was not, and I was pointing him to scripture. And so just be careful. Don't talk negative, point your uh, children to Christ and, um, and trust God. And ultimately you have to surrender your kids because ultimately they might, you might lose them. I did. I had to surrender them and say, okay, Lord, I might lose them in my custody. I might not have them at all. I might have them half the time. Yeah. They might hate me. I might never have a relationship with my kids for doing this to their dad who just came out of prison. But uh, I surrendered it. I said, I, I want to obey you more than if this is the cost, then it is. And so ultimately surrendering saying, of course, we want an outcome where we have the kids most of the time. And uh, where, uh, we have, you know, um, our, we have a good relationship with them, but no matter what, you really have to surrender that to God yeah. and trust him, like an Isaac. Did you want to add anything? Yes. Surrendering your children is an act that you have to really start as early as possible. Mm. I would say, oh, yes, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> this is kind of a crisis, uh, surrendering point. Uh, but because you do feel that matters are completely out of your hands and unpredictable mm-hmm. and then surrendering them to say, these children actually belong to God, you know, I birthed them, but they belong to him. 
mm-hmm. and knowing that he loves them even more that we than we have capacity for really brought me peace and also to then feel like well even as they get older and they age and they make decisions you know that may be contrary to their upbringing i know and trust that god is cradling them and he is protecting them and providing for them and and uh, at the end of the day we are only in control of ourselves, you know, and just managing our children the best that we can, Mm -hmm. trying him in, in, in the moment is really the best thing to do, obeying in the moment. And we read the Proverbs 31 woman. And uh, yeah. one thing is she dresses her family in scarlet. It's yeah. the blood of Jesus. So the best thing we can give our kids mm-hmm. and the best thing we do, again, there's tools to c- deal with an uh, abusive ex, but especially with co-parenting, but ultimately it's your relationship with God and it's uh, pointing them to Jesus. I remember my kids really longing for a father. They've always, they've really never had a father and, um, and feeling sorry for themselves and stuff. And, and for me to live a life and say, where am I? Am I going, am I dating to find that fulfillment? And ama- like, they saw my life that it was spent on my knees in scripture and mm-hmm. finding fulfillment in God. And so they learned to do that, to go to God as their heavenly father and still hard. But uh, so pointing them to Jesus and going to Jesus yourself is key and, 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 and releasing them to God. Um, one thing we also talked about, maybe I, we can read some scripture before we go to other, oh, I mean, some comments. Some comments, yeah. Do, do you want to read some? Yeah, um, some people are surprised that you're going through, um, you, you know, so much right now with your dad's house. And mm. and so uh, Joanne was commenting on that and commenting. Oh, hi, Joanne. Yeah. Love you. Deanne was saying that soft heart. You know, I think she's saying that can get us in trouble sometimes. Soft heart. Yeah. Our biggest mm-hmm. blessing. And sometimes it's, you know, it's our not biggest. Good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I agree. And then Allison says she's praying for you. I think also for your dad. Oh, thank you, Allison. Uh, and then uh, Deanne says again, sensitive and vulnerable. And I think a lot of abused women can feel that way. You know, they have big, mm-hmm. hearts. they want to please their husbands. They want to please. I God. see Alice too. Do you yeah. see Alice? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Sensitive and vulnerable. Go ahead. Talk about that. Sorry. I repent of interrupting you. <laughs> That's anytime. Uh, I, I just agree that 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 can make us. Well, so w- what do you do when you're sensitive and vulnerable? You have boundaries, you know. Mm-hmm. We are the kind of people that uh, just I have really had to do boundaries strongly because I have such a soft heart. And I just yeah. um, anyways, boundaries are important because usually abusers go for that kind of part, too, because mm-hmm. they can kind of. Um, really control that, (laughs) make you feel guilty and always uh, keep you in that slavery. Mm -hmm. Um, I see um, Alice. It's, I just love seeing, is it Jeanne? Yeah. And Alice, some of the familiar faces and, um, they come every, or, you know, not faces, (laughs) but comments, people. Um, And uh, Steve, thank you for being here. And anyways, I do want to say, Alice says, I was guilty of telling some friends in the past, info that I thought would be compassionate towards me. This is so key. This is not necessarily about talking, uh, communicating with an abuser about co-parenting, but uh, Mm -hmm. this is key in terms of you have to be careful who you share your stuff with. Yes. I learned that the hard way. (laughs) Of course, my stuff was shared all over. It was on every news, but um, I shared it with a few sensitive people and it kind of blew up. But I just realized I really, um, about abuse, not everyone understands it. Not everyone is supportive and not everyone uh, can uh, be safe. And so I, you kind of can test the water. It's kind of like that pearl. Yeah. Kind of see, are they, how are they treating it? And so mm-hmm. you really have to be careful who you share mm-hmm. stuff with. Because when you come out of abuse, you want to kind of tell your story to everyone. And that's, yeah. not, that's not good. You know, and, yeah, go ahead. turn on you too. So you really, I would say, use a lot of discretion on who you share your testimony with. And unless it's like people who really understand abuse and are willing to actually fight with you and help you. Mm-hmm. I've, I had people who, you know, I thought I could trust and then realized I couldn't. Um, I wonder if anyone's asked about questions on co-parenting. But I like Alice. She says um, negativity, negativity is not the answer. True. 
<laughs> yeah, I was like, I was uh, not lucky because it was, it's God. I was uh, thankful. I just read Mel's um, message mm -hmm. that I did have the police. They knew my story. All of them were like, we feel so bad for you. You fought so hard to get them out. And now you're fighting for your life. Yeah. And That's I really had amazing detectives and police that just came alongside. Uh -huh. And I'm thankful for that. But um, Mel says, feel you should do right now is not something you can... Anyways, I, I can't read all the messages with Mel. Sorry. Uh, do you want to go? Uh, let's go <clears throat> to the next. Mel, we will get back to you on that. I just ha haven't been able to read the whole entire message. Um, so the other thing I want to say is, um, so we, we talked about when they talk negative about you, you point them to scripture and you kind of, um, you know, uh, explain. Sometimes Saeed would say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm, I would say, trust in God. Like it would get, they would get really scared. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't want to go into detail, but I would say, you know, ultimately we can make plans, but God is the one that directs our steps. Um, yeah. you have scripture about power of prayer. Can you? I, yeah. I want to read James five sixteen. Mm -hmm. And also just to piggyback on what you just said, children should know that they're not responsible for their parents or any adult's happiness. And so if you're, if you or your child is feeling guilty, that's a kind of a red flag to say, you know, check in and think, well, what is, you know, what is the cause of this? And if it's a child feeling guilty for an adult's behavior or emotions, mm -hmm. they need to be assured that, that they don't need. And them. I had to also tell my kids, I have to, uh, there's consequence because when I would call the police, uh, yeah. I didn't want them hating me. And so I had to go through scripture and be like, I have to do this. And, uh, for them to understand that as well, because uh, it was hard for me, not only because I felt bad for him, no matter how badly he behaved, I always felt bad, but also that my kids, you know, for my kids. So I had to, we had to go through scripture and explain that there's consequences to your actions and and we had to be, you know, God uses government to protect us. Yeah. But yeah, the kids are not responsible um, mm -hmm. for their bad behavior. And uh, and I'm not, I wasn't responsible exactly. when I called the police. It was their bad behavior, not yeah. me, you know, because I had to process through that as well. Like, of I'm calling out their bad behavior. I'm not responsible for the consequence, you know. That's, yeah. And you cannot control the reactions of the people around you. You know, mm -hmm. he could have chosen to respond to the police by knowing his place, but, you know, he didn't. And and following the boundary, like, okay, right. if I do this again, it's she's probably going to call the police. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you want to, uh, yeah. did you read the scripture about prayer? I'm gonna read it. Okay. So it's James 5, 16. It says, confess and acknowledge. Oh, wait. yeah. The prayer of a righteous man avail much? Well, that was another one. Oh, okay. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I think the effective fervent prayer of the righteous man yeah. is the one that I wanted to read. And so I'm pulling that up. It's James 5.16. Um, and essentially what I'd like to remind mothers right now is that prayer does wonders. The effective fervent prayer of the righteous mm -hmm. man or woman avails much and god is saying ask and keep on asking knock and keep on knocking mm -hmm. knock knock. that's what the scripture is is do it and keep doing it right persist mm -hmm. Pray without prayer time. is key it's very important as right. i did for uh i still do uh, another thing i want to talk about is counseling for yourself yeah. uh and when you're dealing with a, a co-parenting it's good to have a counselor that steps in and and the the kid is not necessarily listening to you or their dad. They're kind of listening from the counselor's perspective and they can share things with the counselor and also the counselor can pick up on abuse and report it. So uh, finding a good uh, counselor, if it's Christian, it re they really do need to understand abuse. Now I know with kids it's hard because usually your um, ex or student to be ex has to approve it. But uh, did you want to say something about the counseling? Um, yeah, I, I think um, it's okay to actually take your children to a secular counselor if you're a Christian family and you're finding that it's difficult to find abusive therapies within the church that you are in, mm -hmm. or maybe you're um, unsure about <clears throat> the biblical counseling, incorporating a uh, full understanding of abuse. I would just encourage 
use discretion and, and check in with the kids and make sure that this is an effective means of mm-hmm. them communicating. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there's a dynamic between counselor or therapist and child that you really have to use um, careful, you know, observation. My, on. my daughter had a lot of uh, stomach pains and, yeah. um, oh, I do want to say with my son's anger, we did a like three months of study on anger in the Bible and it just God, and we prayed every day, God would uh, keep, keep us from that sin from that and it just just seeing anger removed from our family and peace and joy restored was okay. amazing but my son did a deal with anger yeah. um counseling my daughter had chronic pain and she felt like she needed to make everyone happy including her dad and yeah. the That's counseling cool. really helped her process through that so that was really helpful but also picking up stuff like I took my son again you're so exhausted already I know, and to have to do all of this so we're just giving suggestion you don't have to do it but mm-hmm. uh my daughter um started guitar lessons and singing lessons and that soothed her she would go in her room and write songs and just play the guitar and sing and and journal and just seeing her relationship with the Lord grow was just so amazing and then my son I took him to like clay classes things he could do with his hands and um, so just activities that they can get their emotion out and do something. So um, those are some of the things that helped with, um, with them. Um, I know it's not necessarily talking about co-parenting, but. but this, is, this is really important, actually. And then uh, I want to speak to meeting the children's emotional needs um, a little bit more, because this is a part that can be kind of confusing as a parent to know everything becomes complicated. And so I would invite- Well, it, it, it does relate to the co-parenting because the more you can pour into your kids, help yeah. them feel safe, the more you can uh, help in that re- your relationship with them. It actually also cuts off the uh, abuser's influence back on you, hopefully, and by God's grace. You don't know if that's 100%. But the more your kids grow, the more you pour into them, it, the same way you are become unattractive and unresponsive to their messages when your kids become unattractive and unresponsive too they start seeing the gaslighting they start seeing stuff then you're actually cutting off that influence and manipulation they can't play with it anymore when you're a little bit wiser and two steps Mm -hmm. ahead so pouring into yourself growing and learning and giving your children the ability to manage their emotions and grow closer to the lord that is a legacy that is just across the board, 100% successful. Whether or not your children make decisions that you are align with um, you know, your preferences is another story. But when you are looking and pursuing to heal and grow and com- become closer to the Lord uh, and become more aware of your own discernment and exercising emotional intelligence, it's there's only good that comes from that. It com- becomes really evident to your abuser that you're no longer manipulative and it becomes mm-hmm. really evident to your children that you're actually a very strong and caring woman as a mother and then the cycle of abuse is broken you know and, and this curse is no has no power yeah um we are at 32 minutes <laughs> but i do want to address what tara said before okay. signing off and i know there's more we wanted to talk about like uh, yeah. safe spaces for communication with kids maybe we can um, have us t- talk where we specifically talk about our pouring into the kids and creating a safe, safe space for them and helping them overcome anger. But I do want to address what Tara said. Um, for me, learning to have joy and, okay, I thought we were cut off. Uh, learning to have joy and peace this in the storm was a learning process. Paul says in Philippians that he learned to be content. So, um Let me read Tara's thing again. Uh, How do you maintain your peace and joy despite the difficult situations you you keep going? Um, I maybe we can do a session on that because for me this uh, walk with Jesus is a is like is a relationship. The first storm I was freaking out. The the learning to tap into that connection. I mean, abide. John fifteen is amazing. How do you abide? Um, so learning to really abide in Christ because he's the, he's the, he's the vine. He's that where we sap into and he is joy and peace no matter what. I mean, and it took me a long time to learn. I had to go through a lot of storms and I've learned each storm I fall and then I get back up again. I, I, I call it a storm because 
uh, it feels like waves are crashing and I'm about to drown. And then it's like, look back onto Jesus. And for me being content and finding joy and peace in the midst of storms has been a learning process and has been a, a relationship as I've grown in my relationship with Christ yeah. and I've seen him uh, work through stuff. Uh, so I think I want to address it, uh, Tara, but I think we really need another session to talk about this because uh, I, I really thought about this a lot because I've realized after each storm, uh, God has growing me more and more um, by his, by just, he upholds us with his strength. I don't even know how I stand up. I stood up today or stand up or do anything outside of grace of God and have joy and peace. I don't know. I shouldn't, it's the Bible calls it supernatural. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and I am in the midst of the storm right now. My dad I was probably the closest, very close to him. And yeah. he, uh, I realized he's a rock in my life. He has been a rock. So, uh, but again, that surrender, that life of surrender and uh, brings a lot of peace. And so maybe we can talk about that because I've done some posts and I've done some videos about finding contentment mm -hmm. and it's been a learning process, finding contentment and joy and peace. So um, anyways, okay. and, do you have any lasting words to say? We, we talk a lot. We talk a lot on the phone. We talk a lot on Facebook Live. <laughs> Me and but Melody. We uh, we got some good feedback last Tuesday. People were saying we don't talk too much. Okay, good. Let's talk more. No, just <laughs> we'll be back next Tuesday because apparently this is going okay. Okay. All right. Well, ladies, um, thank you so much for coming. Yes. Thank you. And not all of these uh, guests are ladies. Thank you, Steve, for being here. And Every now and then we have other gentlemen. We appreciate your comments and we will respond to each of them. And Joanne, I will be praying for you. I'm sorry about your uh, father-in-law. And um, wow. I'm sorry about, I had a cancer scare last year. Again, that's another story uh, because of my autoimmune. Um, yeah. I, had to be, I, had a, I had to be tested for cancer. Um, I had to do a biopsy. Anyways, I am so sorry you're going through that. I will be praying for you. And um Hopefully we'll discuss some of this stuff, like going through cancer, that scare, yeah. health issues. and Real life stuff. And finding contentment. Philippians 4, that's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. It talks about anxiety. It talks about being content and all that. So um, you will be in my prayers, Joanne. And love to all of you guys. And uh, we yeah. did talk a lot. But uh, anyways, we love you and we'll yeah. uh, talk later. Love